Hi, this is Greg Paulson over at Zometry, and I wanna to talk to you about rubber-like 3D printing materials. In this case, I have polyjet 3D printing versus carbon 3D printing in different elastomers. Uh, polyjet, uh, as you know from our other series, makes a digital matrix of materials to simulate different rubber-like properties. So what's interesting about this is I could take something and make it a very low Shore-A value, like a Shore-A 27, and I can also make it very high, like a Shore-A 95, where I can barely flex this. Um, it gives you different properties, like this is more flexible, but less tear resistant, and this is less flexible, slightly higher tear resistance. Carbon 3D prints parts in a direct durometer. So this is a Shore A68 material. This is the EPU, elastomeric polyurethane. And this is a Shore A35 material. This is the sill. This is a urethane-based silicone material here. So Shore A35, that's that nice squishiness to it. Uh, Shore A68, kind of that middle line, a uh, nice rubber-like material. Um, think uh, strain relief for your cables, for example, is a great uh, application for this. So what's the difference though? It all comes down to those mechanical properties. These carbon materials can stretch at least 3X what the polyjet materials can before breaking. So that's the most important thing is that when I talk to people about polyjet, I usually say the end of life of a polyjet material is it, it tore on you. Um, where usually if I'm uh, looking for these results, I'm already moving to a urethane cast to get these, these examples. So now I could directly print a much more durable rubber-like material. You can also see a little bit of difference in how these parts print out. Not too much, but both of them had that kind of photopolymer-like resolution to them. Um, but you can see that the carbon materials tend to be, you know, more of a solid feel to them, like a smoother surface. Polyjet has a little bit of this kind of tacky outer to it, and that just has to do with the support structure and how the parts are built. Um, but I did want to talk about the differences here because Polyjet is great for simulating that squish, not great for having that responsiveness and flexibility. And to really prove my point here, I have a EPU-based mesh material that can show off how durable and how responsive this is. So let's move these aside and bring this part center stage. So this is a 3D printed lattice structure in our EPU. And you can just see here how I can work this material. And if I made this in Polyjet, it would be disintegrating in my hands right now. Uh, really great to have these options for more end use elastomers available straight from a 3D printer like Carbon's platform. Thanks so much.